uh, we're about to um, share some things uh, with you all. Uh, my wife and I, we wanted to uh, share some things with you uh, as a token of our, uh, our anniversary appreciation to you all. I know a lot of times for anniversaries, uh, many people like to receive gifts, but uh, we believe that we want to uh, share some things with you that will be a blessing to you all. So if you don't mind, let's stand up and uh, we're going to join hands and we're going to enter into some prayer and share what the Lord has laid upon our heart this morning. So if you could join hands with your spouse, hold the one that's your most important investment that's on this side of heaven. Father God, we come before you right now, first of all, thanking you for the opportunity to have a companion, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for our marriages. We thank you, Lord God, for our union. And Father God, Lord, we just come before you right now asking you to breathe upon us, breathe upon our marriages, breathe upon our union right now. Because Father God, we know that you love marriage and you honor marriage. So, Father God, Lord, we bring our spouse, the one that's most important to us, the one that's the dearest to us, and we bring them before you right now, lifting them up right now, and we pray, Lord God, that you'll touch our spouse, touch our husband, touch our wives right now in the name of Jesus. Minister life like only you can. Father God, I pray that you'll also heal us, Lord God, wherever we may hurt. All of us, we're dealing with certain things, we're dealing with certain issues, but Father God, you're the healer of a broken heart. So, Father God, I pray that you'll sweep through this place. I pray that you'll breathe into us. Hallelujah. New life. I pray, Lord God, that you'll continue to have your way in this union right now. And let us not just exist, but, Lord, let us walk in the purpose that you have for our marriage. And, Father God, we just say thank you in advance. And we give you all the praise, Lord God, for blessing us with the greatest gift on this side of heaven, which is our spouse. And Father God, we just say we love you and we praise you and we give you all the thanks for what you have done in our marriage. And we pray these things in Jesus name. And the church said, amen, amen and amen. You all may be seated. And while you're being seated, give your spouse a a sweet kiss. Let them know that you love them. If you haven't said it already this morning, let them know that you love them. Yeah, where well, mine. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me the luscious. Give me the luscious. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's, we're grateful to see uh, each and every one of you all that's here today. You can drop the music. Uh, and my wife and I, we wanted to uh, share some nuggets um, as to uh, some things that have helped us uh, throughout these years. My wife and I, we've celebrated, uh, we'll be celebrating 24 good years uh, this week. And, and it's been a great journey. Uh, we don't have any horror stories. Can y'all stop the music, please? Uh, we don't have any horror stories. We don't have any uh, things that uh, we've ever said to where we never wanted to do life. Uh, without each other um, and because of that we feel like we have some boats that we can share with you all that will help you uh, be the best that you can be in the union that God has given you. Amen uh, and this morning I pray that you all would take the information and begin to hide it in your heart. I think it's important for us to anchor down our marriages in these seasons and in the times that we're living in the enemy is after us. He wants to destroy uh, what true biblical marriage is. Uh, but as believers, we got to lift up the bloodstained banner. Yes. People are drawn to Jesus Christ based on the way that we live with one another. We're the biggest examples of Christ's love is how we love one another. So that's why we're big components on marriage and what marriage should look like. It should exemplify Christ Jesus. When people see us, they should feel the Holy Spirit. They should feel the presence of God. Our lives should be a radiation of what Jesus' agape love looks like. Who else 
uh, knows all our good, bad, yeah. and ugly, and still loves us anyway, our spouse. You know, they're the ones that are in the trenches with us. Uh, and when we're going through, we got to turn to the one who's with us, the one that's walking beside us. And yeah. so that's why we wanted to spend this time for our anniversary and give back to those that are around us. Amen. Amen. So y'all ready? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about uh, five votes uh, that's necessary to have uh, a connection in your relationship. Um I remember on one occasion um, I had ordered uh, something or my wife had ordered something for the house. And you all know when you get that particular package, um, they have a preview of what that package, uh, that product should look like. I believe that product was a chair. And, um, you know, when you look at that particular package, you can see where uh, the chair looks a certain way. And I remember... Uh, she opened up uh, the box and, you know, I'm not one of the ones that like to actually uh, put things together. So I do the putting together. Yeah, she she do all the putting together. Uh, so she opened up the pack and she began to put together this chair that she had bought. Um, and and it, it started looking good because um, if you look at the particular uh, package and you look at the chair that she began to build, uh, from out of that box, it looked exactly the same. However, uh, when I began to try to sit on that particular chair, it had a, a gangster lean. <laughs> and and, and it, it didn't have, it, it didn't sit like it needed to sit. And y'all, y'all know how sometimes you can sit on a chair and it got that little rock. Where, where one leg might be shorter than the other. Well, literally, uh, that's what was happening. Although my wife put together the chair exactly like it looked on the package, get this, she didn't follow the instructions. And it wasn't until I realized that this chair was rocky and it wasn't the, made the way it needed to be made. And I looked and I said, baby, you got some bolts that's still left over there. And I said, those bolts that you are missing were necessary to make the chair what it needed to be. And this is when God gave us the revelation. Marriage is that same way, where if we don't have the necessary bolts in place, our marriage won't look like the way God intended for it to look like. And and so many marriages, they're wobbling, they're leaning, they're hanging on by a thread simply because we don't follow the instructions that God has given us. So let's begin to look at the five bolts necessary in a relationship. So the first bolt, and you all should have a worksheet because I want you guys to fill these in because I want you to take them home. I want you to start studying these bolts and then look at the ones that you may need some tightening. Yeah, pull out that monkey wrench and get that bolt tighten up. The first bolt, bolt number one, is trust. Trust. A good relationship can cannot be built and sustained without trust. Tw trust towards one another, it is vital in any, any marriage relationship. Yeah. It's hard to be solid when there's a lack of trust, when there's shakiness in the area of trust. If there are some trust issues uh, from the past, we always teach our uh, married couples, don't get historical. We didn't say hysterical, we say historical. Don't bring up the past. If it's in the past, let's let it stay yeah. there so that we can continue to build on the trust. When your trust is solid, then your relationship can be solid. Get that trust on lock, get it real tight. And the way that we can build trust is to be trustworthy. If we're trustworthy, if we're open, if we're transparent, if we're on the up and up with everything that we say and do, everybody knows where everybody goes. You know, it's no hidden things, no things where we got to hide and we peeping and hiding and ducking and sliding yeah, and yeah, DMing yeah, yeah. over here and DMing over there. But we're solid. We got that trust on lock. And if you don't have that trust, 
write down some things that you need to work on so that your trust level can come up. Amen. So let's begin to look at trust because trust, it comes in three different levels and we want to unpack the three different levels. Number one, it tr comes with when you have fidelity, fidelity with your spouse. Uh, in other words, she's your all in all. She's your only one. Um, fidel trust also comes when you're honest um, as Husband and wife, we have to be honest with each other. And sometimes honesty may be intimidating because we, we feel like we can't be honest because we don't want the other party to feel some type of way. But honesty is necessary to have the trust that you're looking for in your relationship. And last but not least, your behavior. Your behavior has to be good. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we say that our actions and our behavior is lining up with you know, our, our trust for one another. But sometimes when our behavior begins to wand or we don't do what we say we're going to do or we're not in the place where we say we're going to be when, when it comes to our spouse, um, that trust can come into question. But in order for your trust to be solidified, you have to make sure that your, your fidelity is intact, you're honest, as well as your behavior is lining up with the words that you say. Got to have those actions. Bolt number two, love. Yeah. Got to have some love. You got to have that love. That love has to be in the mix. And we're not talking about a standard kind of love because standard love wins. Uh, we can be in love today. Everybody gets married because they love each other. <laughs> but a lot of people are getting divorced based on statistics. Yeah. And the higher numbers in the body of Christ. So what happens to the love? Love has to be there, but love has to be sustained. So love is not just a feeling. It is a deep unity maintained by the will to look past flaws, shortcomings, and misunderstandings. It's the ability to see past wrongs, and it's a push to make things right. Yes. Mature people know how to love right. You got to love right. Love doesn't have a feeling attached to it. Just because I don't feel like I love you doesn't mean our love is gone. No, yeah. sometimes we, you, I lost that love and feeling. Mm. You might have that love and feeling <laughs> lost, but you got to hold on to what God says. Yeah. This thing is bigger than just a feeling. This thing is about souls. This thing is about uh, grooming our families to have an example to look at. If we're always talking about how I feel and, oh, he messed up, so I ain't going to love him. Or she said this, or, so my love is gone. What's love got to do with anything? You got to hold on and keep that love burning regardless of what's happening in your heart. So love is vital. We got to make sure our love is on lock. We got to tighten up that love. That means loving through flaws. That yeah. means loving when it's breast ain't loving. When you leave hell on the saint, loving. When you leave draws on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> loving through all of that. Yeah, you know, yeah. we know what our pet peeves are. We know those things that get on our last nerve. We got to love past those things. Yeah. We got to love past how we feel. We got to love past when we in our emotions and stuff are not going the way that we want them to go. Love has to be that anchor. And it's not based on a feeling. It's a based on it's based on a decision. Amen. And, and, and I'm glad that you uh, shared that. Love is not a feeling, it's a, a decision. I'll go a step further and say love is a choice. Yes. Love is a choice. Why? Um, because it is something, it is a decision that we make uh, one to another. And when you start to look at um, what love is, love is literally nothing more than God. God is love. Love is God. And we all know that uh, we love God or God loves us because he has chosen us. It was his choice. And at the same time, it's our choice as well. So we also want to paint the picture that although we're saying that you should love one another, you also may have to make sure that your love is a choice. What kind of choice? An unconditional choice. Yeah. Where you love one another in spite of you, each other's imperfections, where you love each other in spite of each other's differences. You just love each other just because you have chosen to love one another and that's what the agape love of God is where God loves us because he chose us we can do some things that aren't aren't good we can do some things that aren't right 
but it will never stop God from loving us. And God says the same way that I love you is the same way that you have to love your spouse. Although they make mistakes, although, you know, they might do some things that get under your skin. Your love should not waver because it should be unconditional. First Corinthians 13 and four says this love suffers long. It is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. And it's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I believe this is one of my favorite uh, phrases. Love never fails because it lets me know that it, at the end of the day, if I choose to love, love will win. Yeah. Why? Because love never fails. And if we can grab hold to this as believers, uh, we can be statistic busters as it relates to divorce. Yeah. Divorce would never be an option. The only way that you will get out of this life without your spouse is through death. And even in that, we will one day be joined back together again in the presence of the Lord. So at the end of the day, love is a choice because love never fails. Amen. Y'all ready for the third bolt? Bolt number three, respect. R-E-S-B-C-T. Find out what it means to me. R-E-S-B-C-T. Suck it to me, suck it to me. Little respect. Got to have some respect. Yeah, yeah. Respect is the way a person treats something he or she values. If something is highly valued, a person will treat it with honor and dignity. One does not mistreat it or discard it. So a valid question to ask is, how much do I value my partner? Mm. If you really truly respect your partner, if you have a lot of disrespect going on, do you really truly value the one that you're with? It doesn't mean something to you. I know when something's valuable, you put it away in a safe place. You treat it a different way. You know, you polish it just right. You cover it up. You make sure it's where it's supposed to be. Yeah. You don't just throw it around. <laughs> if somebody gave you a Rolex watch, you ain't going to just throw it on the ground. No, mm -hmm. you're going to make sure you put it up at night. You're going to make sure you care for it. When you get that new car, y'all know how it goes. You make sure that car is clean. Ain't no eating in my car. It's valuable to you. Yeah, yeah, it's valuable to and you when you time, first get it. And over time, yeah, what yeah, happens? Yeah, over time, you start <laughs> eating in it. Uh, Wings chicken wing, the side. Uh, the, the, the um, glass be busted, um, get your <laughs> knocks and dents in it. And you don't necessarily Value it. take care of it like you used to. Because what has happened? You don't value it quite the way that you used to. And quite honestly, although we're talking about valuing each other in relationship, uh, truth be told, sometimes over time, our value or respect for one another, it tends to wane. Mm -hmm. And this is when we have to uh, snap out of the trance or the spell that we might be in and get back to valuing uh, one another. Because at the end of the day, the most important investment that you have yeah. in this life yeah. is sitting right next to you. It's not your children. It's not your house. It's not your cars. It's not your money. It's your spouse. Yeah. This is why God says, for this call shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. And they shall be what? Bone to bone, flesh to flesh, one flesh, naked and not ashamed. Why? Because God understood that you should value your spouse the same way you value yourself. And if you value your spouse the same way you value yourself, your respect for one another will never wane. It will always be there. So keep the value just like when you have uh, that new vehicle, just like when you have uh, that new relationship. When you meet new people, you, 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 know, you, you value them a little bit more. It's like that honeymoon phase. You're like, oh, it's so new. This love is so special. It's so bubbly. But then after the year five, you know, things start weaning a little bit. After 10, it weans a little bit more. Then you, after 10, after 20, you got to keep those value levels high. But one thing I found about our relationship is that 
it seems as if the love grows over time. Mm. A lot of people think that over time you'll get tired of a person or you'll be like, oh, well, you know, uh, he good. What's up, babe? <laughs> <laughs> and you ignore that person. But no, you really truly want to be in the presence of that person. That person is now becoming. It's like a becoming. You become one. You can't see your life without them. It's like a value that you can't really put a number on. You know, we got to honor our spouses. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's about honoring them. It's about valuing who they are, what they bring to the table. If you erase your spouse out of your life, start thinking about the things that you would be missing. You know, a lot of stuff we don't pay attention to. But there's a lot of things that our spouse bring to our life that we didn't even realize we needed. You know, there's certain things. I don't pump gas. I don't drive. You know, certain stuff. I'm talking about the little small things that you don't think yeah, about. Yeah. You know, those things make the difference. I don't get out the car to do nothing. I'm going to sit back <laughs> <laughs> and let him go and do what he got to do. Yeah, you yeah. know, those are the intangible things. The big stuff, paying bills and all of that. Yeah, those are good, but it's those little small things that you miss if your spouse is not in your life. So I want you to start remembering and valuing those little small little details. Maybe it's the kiss in the morning before work. Whatever it is, just value your partner. Amen, amen. All right, so we talked about a few bolts. We said, number one, you have to have trust. Bolt number two, you have to have love. Bolt number three, you have to have respect for one another. Is boat number four. You got to have understanding. What I need from you is understanding. To communicate. Y'all, y'all, y'all know. Y'all leaving me hanging. Y'all act like y'all been saved all y'all life. saved by then. I don't know that. Yeah. Word. What was that? SWV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Escape. It was escape. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So, I so. Was saved. Oh, she was saved. Yeah. Shade. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> but boat number four is you got to have understanding. A man once wrote a note to his wife after a misunderstanding. Dearest, if I say something that can be taken two ways, and one of those ways make you sad or angry, I meant it. The other way. <laughs> so, 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 so this man, he, 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 he's a wise man. He said, <laughs> babe, I, I've said some things, but if whatever I have said or whatever I have done has caused you to feel sad or angry, I meant it the other way. So in other words, this man was, was trying to do what he needed to do to make sure that his relationship was the best that it can be. Understanding one another is a boat that has everything to do with going to school. A husband's job is to become, get this, a student of his wife. A wife's job is to become what? A student of her husband. I know on Tuesday nights we got the student of the word night where we want to be students of God's word. But can I suggest that you also should be a student of your wife if you're a husband? And if you're a wife, you should be a student of your husband. You should have a Ph.D. as a wife. Ph.D. in Charlesology. Nah, I was going to say uh, the other one. Oh, oh, that ology. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, you should have a Ph.D. in who your spouse is. Yeah. In other words, you should study her. You should know what makes a move. You should know what gives her life. You should know what makes her come alive yes. because at the end of the day, your spouse is nothing more than a flower. And the more you pour your love and the more you feed her and the more you give to her, guess what? She going to open up and, and become the beautiful thing that you have, have that God have cultivated mm -hmm. and God has created her to be. Um, so at the end of the day, you should be studying the moves that your wife makes. Do you know what moves her? Do you know what makes her come alive? Do you know what makes her shine bright like a diamond? Do you know what puts a smile on her face? Do you know what takes the pressure off of her and lifts her up? 
These are some things that we as men, we have to do because just as you study to excel on your job and in your career, which will one day fade away, we should do that. We should put in that same work with our spouse so that we can understand what makes them come alive. We got to be specialists in our spouses. Doctor, call me Dr. Williams. Yeah. I got a PhD, Dr. Williams. In what? In Charles Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> I like that sound. I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to move too fast because at the end of the day, and I want you to see this, Sarah called Abraham Lord. Ooh. Will you love on your spouse good enough, so good, that she wakes up one day and say, hey, Lord, <laughs> what would you like today? <laughs> don't that sound good? Man, I'm about to pull out my credit card. I'll pull out the credit card. I'll pull out all kind of money. I'll pull out everything that I have. Because that's something that would make me feel good. But as a man, give you food for thought. What can you do to one day make your wife wake up one day and say, good morning, my Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning, my Lord. They stewing on it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at First Peter 3 and 7. It says, in the same way, you husbands should lo- live with your wives mm-hmm. in an understanding way. Since they are weaker than you, you should show them respect because God gives them the same blessing he gives you, the grace of true life. Do this so that nothing will stop your prayers from being heard. This is serious, and I want husbands to understand that your love and your respect for your wives Mm -hmm. could be a hindrance to God answering your prayers. When we talk to God, we want to have a heart that is full of compassion for our wives. A lot of husbands, they just want to rush through the day. We want to get through. They want to just get through whatever they're getting through. But that love, that compassion, that understanding, sitting with your wives, not giving us headlines. We want to know the whole day. Just give me some (laughs) give me some good information. Not I went to the store. I went to work. I got the coffee. Okay, can I have some in-betweens, please? What did you get when you go went to the store? How was your day? When I say how is your day, I want to know some details, not headlines. Give me some fillers. And that's That's about understanding. When you understand your wife, you understand that we're into some of the details. Let's talk a little bit. Not just, yes, no, Mm -hmm. okay, that's good, whatever you want, all right. Those are not communication words. We need those fillers. We need that talking. We need that time. We need that all the whole essence of just that oneness of being. So that's why it's important to have that level of respect. Amen. And last but not least, boat number five, five. is faith. Mm-hmm. Is faith. The most. the most important part is faith. You have to have, number one, faith in God. But then also you have to have faith in one another. Faith is the understanding that there is something, get this, that's larger than yourself. You understand that your relationship is bigger than just the two of you. Two of you. you see the bigger picture. Yeah. It's all about Christ being displayed on the earth. So when we talk about faith, we're talking about your marriage being literally a billboard so that men and women can see your relationship yeah. and one day desire what God is doing in your relationship. Yeah. Um, Our marriages are walking billboards to where we're displaying God's love uh, in natural form here on this earth. Marriage is the closest relationship that we have that displays God's relationship with us. When we love one another and we continue to stick it out with one another through the flaws and through the tests and through the trials, it's a demonstration of how God loves us and he never gives up on us even though we may miss the mark and miss the moments. Remember, God is married to the backslider. 
So here's what he says. Even though you might be out pimping, clubbing, and thugging, even though you might not be doing what you know that you need to do that's right, my love for you, it will never waver. And this is what we have to do as couples. Even though we might have our differences and we might not see things eye to eye, we got to look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture says the more we stay together, the more we'll look just like God. And the more we stay together, the more people we can win for God through the life and the lifestyle that we live. So we just want to paint the picture that uh, at the end of the day, what is the bigger picture? The bigger picture is that God will be glorified. God will be lifted up and exalted. The more we stay together, when people know that we got differences and we and they know the tests and the trials that we've been through, but yet we still together. It's a demonstration of how God love endures all, how God love is kind and how God's love is patient. And at the end of the day, God's love, it never fails. And our love will be demonstrated one to another through the marriage union that God has given us. This thing is bigger than us. And once you understand it's bigger than you, you'll realize some of the petty things that we talk about or argue about, it's nothing. This thing is bigger than just who left something, who left the toilet seat up. It's bigger than how much money you spent when we're trying to have a a savings goal. It's bigger than uh, you doing something or you didn't come back when you said you was going to come back. That's simple stuff in the eyes of God. People need to see what real love looks like. Yeah, yeah. We got to be that example. We got to walk this thing out. So many people are drawn to the life that me and Pastor Charles has, not because of us preaching or us teaching, but they're drawn to the love that they see that is in our relationship. Yeah. They see the love of God through how we love each other. And people will see us in the street. Matter of fact, we were out eating one time and somebody put $50 in both our hands and began to share with us how yeah. our marriage has ministered to them. They're not a part of this ministry, yeah. but because they see the love of God, they see it being demonstrated on a regular basis. And they wanted to sow that seed into our lives and just begin to say, thank you for what you do. Come on, come Thank on, you come for on. the love that you show and display yeah. that people can see that God is love. You can still have a good time and love one another. You can still be in God and, and not look like your marriage is dried up like a prune, yeah. but you're flourishing. So that's why it's important. That's why it's valuable. We got to live this thing out so people can see Jesus. We could be the only Jesus people see yeah. based on how we love each other. Our neighbors, they know how we live in. They know how we love it. They know what's going on in our households. They're not fooled, not one bit. But if they see the love of Jesus, they see how we love on each other. They yeah. will want to serve the God that you serve. Yeah. And so that's why we always push, push, push. It's not about the words that come out of your mouth because we can talk a good game. A lot of us can preach and do all kind of stuff and we can say the right things at the right time. But what does your life say? What is your life speaking? Can people look at your life and say, oh, the uh, power of the Holy Ghost on their marriage. Yeah. They've gone through some, te- some tests and some trials, and they come out pure as gold. God has touched their life. God has ministered to them. That's the family that I want to see. I want to see what the, the God that they got. I want to be a part of that. What is your life speaking to other people? We got to be billboards of love. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Yeah. And, and, and to keep it real, uh, the person that uh, gave us uh, that money, uh, they were going through uh, some hard times. It wasn't necessarily easy. Um, they were literally about to call it quits um, because of some things that have happened in their marriage. But God used the life that my wife and I, we live and we try to portray before um, the public as a testimony that if God can do great things through our life, he's able to mend their broken heart, fix their relationship, and they can continue to walk together. Ecclesiastes 4 and 11 says this, and I'm going to close, and let's get some music, please. If two people sleep together, they will be warm, but a person sleeping alone will not be warm. An enemy might be able to defend one person, 
defeat one person, but two people can withstand, can stand back to back to defend each other. And three people are even stronger. They are like a rope that has three parts wrapped together. It is very hard to break. I love this because it lets us know that um, if we try to do life by ourselves, it's easy for the enemy to come in and defeat us. But if we pair up uh, with one another, what is that? Husband with the wife and wife with the husband. They're hard to be defeated. But when you begin to add the, the supernatural value of Christ in the middle of the husband and wife and wife and the husband, now you got a threefold cord. And the scripture says a threefold cord is not easily broken. Simply being, if we inject Christ in our relationship, there's nothing that we can't overcome. Yeah. There's nothing that we can't overstand, yeah. uh, uh, o- overcome and withstand. So, so we're just trying to just paint the picture that at the end of the day, make sure you got these boats in your life. Yeah. What is that? You got to have trust. You got to have love. You got to have some respect. You got to have some understanding. And most importantly, you got to have faith. Faith, faith in God. Why? Because when you got faith in God, you can look at a mountain and tell that mountain to move. And it has to move out of your life. And in marriage, you're going to have many mountain moving situations where you're going to have to look the enemy dead in his eyes and say, devil, you can't have my marriage. Devil, you can't steal my joy. Devil, you will not get the victory. Why? Because God says a threefold cord. It's not easily broken. Let's give God some praise. Amen. And as we close in prayer, uh, as a token, I got some nuts and bolts. Yeah, yeah. I got some nuts and bolts that I want to, yeah, get to y'all. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and um, pass pass it out. Drop it, drop it in their hand. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't drop some of it, but yeah, <laughs> it should be enough. Yeah. Yeah. I just want you all to know that marriages don't come without challenge. It Keep them separated. Keep them separated. One get a nut, one get a boat. Marriage doesn't come without challenges. We have challenges. They're going to come. Tests and trials, they come to make us strong. And so when we're going through, we have to remember that Christ has to be the center of everything that we say and do. We got to handle our disagreements righteously. We got to stay in in walking the flow of the Holy Spirit in everything that we say. Don't say anything that will be detrimental to your marriage relationship. Words can be very, very damaging. So we got to monitor our mouths. We got to keep our mouths holy. So we can continue to flow in the harmony that Christ has for our relationship. We've gone through some tests. We've gone yeah. through some trials. We In these 24 years, y'all don't think we ever had a disagreement? Oh, yeah, we had a plenty. Matter of fact, uh, we, we think totally different. Everybody see us and they see the harmony that we move in. But we, he west side, I'm east side. Mm-hmm. We think totally different. You A-M, I'm F-M. F-M. I'm FM. He no, no, no. I'm the clear channel. No, <laughs> you see the one that's be all static and fuzzy. Be going in and out. Yeah. <laughs> so we have our differences. We've come through some real, I'm talking about some things yeah, that would take a lot of marriages yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. We faced life and death together. Yeah. And in those times, we didn't turn outward. We turned inward. We turned into each other. When we needed that support, we leaned on one another. When the enemy thought he was going to kill us. Yeah. I'm talking about literal. I ain't talking about uh, when people say, oh, the devil tried to kill me. He had all these pressures and problems. No, I'm talking about a literally kill. Yeah. We had somebody come into our home and invade our home with guns to try to kill us. When the enemy thought he was going to kill us, yeah. God withstood us. Yeah. We stood through some things. You're looking at people and you see People who have walked together through a lot of different tests and trials. We're not talking about no play play stuff. We're talking about literal things that God held us through. How do we make it? 
by leaning on each other. Yeah. We put our backs to one another and stood the test of time. We stood the storm that tried to come together. We didn't do it by ourselves. We had that threefold cord. Yeah, God intervened. That was not easily broken. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit sustained us. Yeah. He kept us together. He was in the midst of everything that we began to say and do. And in these 24 years, it's been good years. It's been glorious years. God has kept us all this way. And I think God today that that decision that I said yes was one of the best decisions. Amen. Second to accepting Christ Jesus that I could make in my life. Amen. And that should be all Amen. of our testimony. Yeah, 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 yeah. We married our spouse for a reason. We married our spouse for a reason. Um, we fell in love for a reason. And, and because of that, it's a sign that we have made uh, the second best decision in our life. And I put some um, bolts in your, in your hand, and I, I guess I'm going to give you a fifth bolt that's necessary to have the connection in your relationship. And that's this thing called sex. I don't have a slide for it. The sixth bolt. Um, it is something that, that is necessary in every relationship. But truth be told, when you look at it statistically, married couples aren't having enough sex. We're not coming together enough. We're not ha making love enough, if you want to use that, that term. We're not making love enough. Um, statistics say that most married couples, they get together uh, right now about one time a week. That's sad, y'all. One time a week? That's sad. How can you get to know the innermost part of your spouse without having that connectivity. Uh, I believe the average should be around three times a week. We need to get together. I heard some amens over there. Yeah. Yeah, at least about three times. Why? Get this. Because if you want to have that intimate connection, what better way to do it than in the confines of sex? We make love. We come together. That's where we put our boat in that particular nut. Me and y'all got y'all boats? Y'all y'all should have boats. and it, it, it should not be near man in here with, with, with a nut. She, she try, yeah, yeah, we got a nut, but we ain't try, yeah, you, but we, we, we boats. Yeah, I need, I need my, I need my, 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 I, what, what mine? I need mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah, give me that boat. Yeah, she got the nut. And y'all already know how it works. In order for us to be connected, the men, what we got to do? Put our boat in the what? All right, let's make it happen. <laughs> Come on, baby, you messing it up. You fumbling and bumbling. Sometimes I be fumbling and bumbling. So there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. It took two of y'all to make this work, right? It take two of y'all to make it come together and happen, right? Yeah. But now that it's locked, guess what? It's locked. And God wants to make sure that our marital relationship is locked just like uh, our sexual and intimate union one with another. So I want to encourage you all. To make sure y'all remember these six bolts. What is it? Trust. What is it? Uh, respect. Love. Understanding. Faith. And the sixth bolt is what? You got to have that if you want the chair to sit right. Let's give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise yeah. and we're going to pray yeah, out. You're close with prayer. Begin to hold your spouse's hand. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this union that you've put together. Lord God, your word said what God has joined together. Yes. Let no man put us under. Father, I thank you, God, for joining us together as one, one flesh. We're on one mind, one accord. Yes. Father, I thank you for oneness in each and every marriage that is here today. I oh, pray, God, man. that you'll continue to cover us with your blood. Father, unify us. Let us look like you everywhere that we go. Let the words that we say out of our mouths and the lifestyle that we live match. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to walk in your agape love yes. so that people can reflect or see the reflection of your son, Christ Jesus. And Father, we just give you praise. We give you honor and glory. Thank you for our spouse. 
Thank yes. you for our Thank spouse. You, Lord. Thank you Hallelujah. for our spouse. Yes. We are grateful. Yes. We're appreciative yes. for the one that you gave us. Glory. We're thankful for the one that you gave us. We love the one we with, God. We thank you for the one that you've given us. And, Father, we will walk this thing together. Yes, Lord. One, in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Come on, let's bless yes, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Yeah, give your spouse bless some luscious God. and uh, amen. That's all we have. Yeah. <laughs>